Welcome. Hey everybody, welcome back to Game Bytes, our show about creating video game assets. I'm your host, Omni Jakala, and today on our show we have Andrew Coleman. Hey guys. And today we also have a special guest on the show, Sammy Briggs. Hey. Now, for those of you who might not know her, Sammy is an artist who goes by Smy on Twitter and elsewhere on the internet. And she's got a large body of work, including Splatoon, Sonic, Pokemon, Bomberman, and of course she does a, a lot of commissions. She has a healthy number of those as well. And perhaps most notably, she has a large body of work of Snowboard Kit, which brings us to today's Game Byte topic. Now this Game Byte is part of a new project that we started back actually a while ago, which is a hypothetical sequel to Snowboard Kit. Snowboard Kids is a series that hit its peak on the N64, and then it was followed up by a sequel in 1999. In terms of genre, they're similar to a lot of other kart racers where you battle against, or rather race against other uh, racers, I guess. Now there actually were two other Snowboard Kids games that were released uh, later on. One of them was Snowboard Kids Plus, and then another was Snowboard Kids DS, which is perhaps more infamous. Snowboard Kids Plus was released only in Japan and was basically uh, sort of like an expansion on Snowboard Kids 1. I think it was just extra characters and bits and bobs like that. So Andrew was working on this project sort of on his own to start, just sort of because he loves the series himself. And uh, we always have all sorts of ideas for kind of niche titles that we want to work on. And uh, Andrew pointed out that there was an artist on Twitter who was doing a lot of great Snowboard Kids artwork. Of course, that was Sammy. But uh, so Andrew had this great idea to reach out to Sammy, and uh, I guess we're calling you the art director for this project. It feels weird to have like role titles for you know, like a fan art project, but uh, that's certainly the, the the role that you've been serving on this project. You sort of leading all of the art design, the character design, and all of that stuff. So we want this game to feel as as original to Sammy's art as if this is like. Sammy's world, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can call it your interpretation of the characters in the world, because there's some subtle differences between like the original art style and the way that you draw the characters, which I think is appropriate for for any sort of remake like this. Like if you look at you know, games like Spyro and Crash, there's subtle ways that the the new art directors sort of interpret the characters um, that kind of modernizes it a bit and also just brings its own kind of flavor, which is always nice. Well, I would say the original character designs still hold up today, so I think what I would want to do is just keep true to the original style and then just kind of modernise it a little bit and give a little bit of my personality to an art style. But I think we can all agree that we don't want to go down the DS route at all, so... <laughs> oh yeah, definitely not. Oh, on that note, I should say that illustration you made of the DS slash, <laughs> that's really nice, actually. <laughs> Thank you. I don't really, I, I understand why they went with the anime art style, but it just takes all the charm out of what made Snowball Kids so lovely and cute, so. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of character designs of older properties try to reinvent the character a lot, just to sort of make it feel more contemporary with like what kinds of art styles are currently in vogue or, or popular. And they totally don't need to do that. So much of the original character design still has a lot of charm and the fact that they feel maybe a little bit more inspired by older uh, trends is actually sort of what makes it appealing like if you look at classic mickey mouse it has its own kind of feel you don't have to change too much i think just taking taking whatever problems it might have that are like intrinsic to maybe the way that it was uh, handled that maybe doesn't feel right today like something that we were talking about was um some of the character designs it, it's called Snowboard Kids, but some of the character designs don't feel like kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Especially the characters that they added in Snowboard Kids Plus. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. They're horrible. Like, you look at these these character designs on the, on the wiki, and it says, like, what's the guy with, like, super muscular kid? I tried to drown those characters out, out of my memory, to be honest. <laughs> he looks like he just bought a car for his family. <laughs> He's 10 years but, old! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seeing that that image and then seeing the age in the description there, it just does not line up. But even characters like like Linda seem a little bit overdeveloped, so to speak. Yeah, it's too much. For being 10. 
And I do appreciate that you've made all of the characters feel like kids in all of your illustrations, which is great. So the character that we're working on for this particular game bite is Mr. Dog, and we actually expanded on it a little bit, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but so this was a character that was in both Snowbird Kids 1 and 2. Andrew, do you want to talk a bit about this character and what his role was? So Mr. Dog is the owner of the board shop in Snowbird Kids 1 and the paint shop in Snowbird Kids 2. And in Snowbird Kids 2, he's also an unlockable character that you can play as. I forget what his unlock conditions are. So you have to get all the newspapers in all of the mailboxes. Thing. Oh, for yeah. like that... um The mini game, yeah. So Mr. Dog is kind of interesting in that he's the only kind of adult that the game ever shows off. Yeah, the rest of the characters are all kids, right? Snowboard kids. Yeah, I think he's the only like animal adult in the whole game. We can kind of, you can kind of like draw some parallels. We, we realized this when we were doing a lot of the design uh, and discussion is that there's a lot of parallels between this sort of world that they built and Splatoon. Uh, like Splatoon's world is like chock full of all of these teenagers all over the place. And then there's only like a handful of adults that you ever see. So it's kind of interesting. There's also like a hub kind of area that uh, we're kind of drawing some inspiration from. But that's going to be in a later episode, probably. I think there's something about like trying to get down a, a more consistent or unique shape vocabulary that Sammy actually brought to it that I think is really great. Well, as I said before, we want to keep as original as we can. But um, and even though he is just a background character, I think that his design could do been a little bit more sprucing up so maybe highlighting areas such as his little hair or even his eyebrows like his eyebrows are much thicker and just things like just little little touches just but you can still kind of recognize that it is Mr. Dog. I think one of the big changes was the eye shape which was more of a just a regular circle before and then you've brought it into more of a uh, an elliptical shape which I, I think is really nice. I think I wanted to keep it the same as like the kids designs. But of course we kept his tongue sticking out perpetually. Yes, that is a detail you cannot drop. No. <laughs> so while we were working on the design, we did notice that this particular version of the, uh, the character feels a little bit younger than the version that was in the original games. And so we wanted to try to think of ways to make the character feel a little bit older. Um, and so if you take a look at the next iteration, we uh, started to add a few elements that kind of feel a little bit more elderly. Now, I don't know how old the dog was supposed to be in the first games. Does it? Did they ever talk about like what the dog's age is? For Mr. Dog, they didn't give us any ages. It was just the kids that had ages, so... Although they do mention like he used to be uh, a really great snowboarder, yeah. but we haven't ever seen it in the first game. So maybe that kind of uh, alludes to the fact that maybe he stopped because he got older. <laughs> I don't know. It's sort of just like my headcanon that I'm coming up with <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> It works. <laughs> I, th I think they say that he was a great snowboarder, but no one saw him. I think that's like the only description they have. Mm. Right, yeah. Mm. But you can see him snowboarding in his uh, dream. His dream, point. yeah. As we were continuing to develop the character, we started coming up with some of the narrative ideas that we wanted to kind of explore for this hypothetical game. And one of those was that there would be sort of a time jump between Snowboard Kids 2 and this one. But not uh, too much. Not too long, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah like maybe one or two years and in dog years you know that's 14 years right so we landed on this particular design which gave him glasses and sort of a plaid shirt and it just felt a little bit more like you know uh, mr dog slash dad figure that all of the characters can look up to so some of the other details are things like he has work boots on work gloves and uh that sort of points to his role in the game which is uh as a snowboard well in the original games he he customized your snowboard in this particular version that we've come up with in our heads he's sort of the one who cuts the boards and sands them and then the role of actually painting the boards goes to another character which again we'll touch on in a second but to start out we started blocking a really really simple topology we actually uh there's an artist <laughs> um, omni, I forget his name omni really likes this stuff omni really likes <laughs> these silly blocks when they're unsubdivided yeah okay so <laughs> So starting out, we just blocked out with really simple topology, uh, starting with mostly just subdivided cubes. And uh, as you can see here, when you unsubdivide the cubes, it looks really, really silly, like really primitive geometry. But uh, there's this one artist that I really like named Alex Hoyle on Twitter. I guess he's named that in real life too, but he's Alex Hoyle. 
and um, he he likes to make this really simple character artwork that utilizes this particular just using really really simple topology and subdividing it to get the shapes that you want and uh, it worked out for us just because it's a really good way to block out shapes just kind of combining spheres and ovals and whatnot together until you get the general shapes that you want and then you can retopologize after that so we would started blocking out that way um, and then we were constantly you know going back and forth with Sammy just to make sure that everything's sort of feeling like the way that she envisioned yeah finding that balance was uh, very important and being able to get feedback from Sammy uh, was very pivotal for that particular process so like I had mentioned before when we were designing and iterating on the design for Mr. Dog we we came to the realization that uh, he felt a little bit more youthful than we maybe were going for and that gave us the idea, I can't quite remember how or who came up with the idea, but that that led to the idea of spinning that design off into a design for his son, which he might have had uh, in the one or two years that passed between Snowboards 2 and Snowboards 3. So this is a piece of concept art that Sammy drew for Mr. Dog, but he looks so cool, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. Mr. Dog can't be that cool, can he? <laughs> Instead of this being Mr. Dog, maybe we can make this his son. And then if it's his son, then we have to go some amount of time into the future, but not too far. Yeah, I mean, we could always, like, you could assume that maybe his son was already born in Snowboard Kids 2. Yeah. And just was too young to work at the shop. Hmm. And then, I mean, another year goes by, and, and or, two, or two, and that's 14 years, so I'm sure he's old enough to be helping out now, you know, helping Dad in the shop. Well, all of the logistics aside, we decided, you know, it'd be fun to have a, a son character. And uh, recently we started talking about, where's Mom? And we'll talk about that sometime <laughs> later. For now, it's just Mr. Dog and Mr. Dog Jr., as we're calling him. Kind of like Bowser and... Bowser. Oh, yeah. Exactly. It's actually kind of. <laughs> Where, hmm. Where's the mom? <laughs> it's Miyamoto. Miyamoto's Mr. Dog Jr.'s mom. Even though he didn't work on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Dog Jr. is the one who's going to be painting the boards in this game rather than Mr. Dog Sr. Now, I'm just going to say Jr. from now on because that's faster. <laughs> Mr. Jo Something about Mr. Dog Jr. cracks me up because it's like MR. <laughs> dog jr <laughs> but that's the kind of like i feel i feel like that's silly in a charming way yeah, that we could actually just let that be the name it's definitely something that they would actually do in the games for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> so some of the differences between the characters that we wanted to sort of point to 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 emphasize the age difference is giving uh, glasses to mr dog senior and um making mr dog senior's muzzle resemble the original character design a little bit which was a lot larger like really sort of bulbous in the front uh, a lot of the mass was more balanced in the uh, first concept that Sammy had drawn so we brought that back a little bit more and um, we gave Junior cooler hair I, that was actually was that in the original sketch or was that the hairstyle change was that uh, later? I think that was the hairstyle change that I made for Junior just to kind of um, like mirror what Mr. Dog Senior's hair is also, since Junior is about the same age as the, as the kids now, he, uh... Um, I suppose he takes his dad's role in snowboards with the kids? Yeah, since his dad's so much... He's only one year older, but I guess one year's kind of a long time for a dog. So another little minor detail we had to think of for Mr. Dog in general was the paintbrush that he uses in Snowboard Kids 2, which is, if you look at him in his paint shop, <laughs> it's kind of... <laughs> silly how large the paintbrush he's holding is and it just has he's got four colors on there that's not very uh it's i really not very just good. noticed that now well i think i i guess the intention was that the brush is like as wide as a snowboard so that he could just like do one brush stroke and then it's all oh, done it's very efficient which of course means you can only do like linear patterns that go in one direction but i mean it's it's a video game we can just let it yeah. let it fly i mean adeline <laughs> Adeline just slaps the heck out of her canvas and you get enemies and whatnot, so don't worry about it too much. 
Um, but yeah, it is definitely very comically large. And uh, as we were building it out, I was actually painting parts of my house at the time. So I was like, I've been looking at a brush a lot lately. <laughs> so here, use this reference, Andrew. And so I pointed him toward uh, that particular brush handle shape. While Andrew was working on the paint material uh, in substance, Splatoon, once again, served to be a very useful reference for how to glob the paint on the brush. So that's really nice. And that's all just bump map and diffuse and roughness change. Like there's no geometry that, that actually separates the paint from the brush there, right? There's just That is correct. Yeah, the paint textures. The paint is just a um there's a height map on the paint, so it looks like it's raised up off of the bristles, but it's all just through textures. If you look at how the paint is on Splatoon, the cutoff for the paint is very clear. I said like nothing else on the brush has paint on it. Yeah, it's just like a hard line contour there. Uh, yes, and that definitely kind of uh, fits in line with the, the simplicity that we're going for, uh, matching with what Sammy's drawing on the characters, I think. To try to overcomplicate it would be sort of out of, out of line with the rest of the design. The recent Pokemon games are quite good for reference as well, because of how simplistic mm. the models are and the clothing. So I wanted to kind of have a, a middle ground between all of the recent Nintendo games. Now we were working on this well before we went to Lightbox Expo, which took place in September. Uh, but something that was really uh, hammered into us while we were there is that um, during a Nicholas Cole talk, our presentation about Spyro Reignited Trilogy, it, it became very apparent to us that there's really no magical formula for uh, finding the perfect balance for a character redesign or reinterpretation. It's just there has to be a lot of iteration and trial and error and eventually you just land on what feels right and that's going to be partially fueled by uh, other fans and other fan art in the world and that's also just going to be fueled by your own intuition and you just kind of have to trust your gut if you have a, a strong feeling about something and a conviction about how a character should look um, just follow that compass well then I guess that is pretty much it for this episode that uh, concludes what we've done with the characters up to this point there's probably going to be small changes that we make later on, but for now, uh, this is what we have to show you that's completely finished. So I hope you guys are enjoying the direction that this project is moving in. Obviously, this is the first episode, so um, we tried to include little bonuses like this environment that you're seeing, uh, which was based on a drawing that Sammy did for us, which is great. And uh, I love swirly trees. <laughs> They're great. I love those. Hopefully, since we have the world and work pipelines roughly figured out, we'll be able to make characters a little bit more quickly and, and hopefully move on to gameplay as soon as possible because that's going to be a lot of fun to build out. Boy, do we have too many projects on, <laughs> that we're working on right now. We're working on Bomberman this, other things that we're not going to talk about yet. Um, don't worry, Smashified still exists. <laughs> we're going to get to that again. It's nice that uh, Super Smash Bros. is going to have more DLC because that gives us more time to uh, finally get back to Smashified. Now, we have to also thank our patrons. And if you're still supporting us on Patreon, you guys are real troopers because our upload schedule has been so inconsistent up to this point. So thank you so much for all that you guys are doing. And if you have the means and you want to support us in that way, uh, feel free to check out our Patreon page. The link to that is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much... Uh, it for this round so uh sammy thank you so much for being with us on this project it's been great to have you along oh no worries thank you so much for having me you guys will probably be hearing from sammy more in future episodes mm -hmm. uh, but until then we'll see you guys in whatever we decide to show you next <laughs>